So I've been working on this for about an hour. It's a little uh, a room koala carved out of MDF, medium density fiberboard. This one is gonna be one of my carved and painted pieces. Um, so I'm about an hour into it. And before Instagram kicked me off um, for hitting that hour mark, I was talking to a woman from Dallas. Is she still, did, was she able to come back in here? The lady from Dallas. Hello everyone. Are you guys all new viewers or is, or is people popping back in from the last video? Like I said, you're, you're coming in at the, uh, the second hour of me working on this carved and painted uh, koala room piece. So, but I was, um, working on this this guy and talking talking through answering questions so if you guys have any you know anything you want to say or ask um, please do I see most of them not all of them if I miss your question I apologize um, the phone's mounted a little bit over my head so I have to peek up to see it and sometimes the questions and comments come in pretty quick the alerts do so before I got kicked off I was talking to a woman from Dallas um, is she is she still in the room you're here um so like i was saying that dallas i don't know where it cut off so i'll just kind of start dallas i like to stay um you know probably about an eight to ten hour drive from atlanta dallas might be a little bit outside of that but if you have you know a, a show or a festival that you think would you know be be right up my alley please do share with me and maybe i can maybe i can see if it's makes sense for me to come out to dallas um but I was thinking if you um, if you make a little note in it when you if you place if you do place an online order if you make a note um, I'll I oftentimes I'll film my printing sessions and I can uh, I can film the printing session for your kid and kind of walk them through the process of what I'm doing and just film the whole process of, the process of his shirt being made if you're, if you're into that too. So if you make a little note in the description um, where you would put the, what color t-shirt, I'd be happy to do that for you. What kind of wood is this? This is MDF, medium density fiberboard. Medium density fiber board. Do I prefer MDF over other wood? Um, yeah, I like the way it carves. I mean, I've, I've, I've carved like, ma I like maple too, but maple is, um, you know, it's, it's rough to carve and it's expensive. 
Um, I like carving the skate decks, which are all maple. It just carves differently. I like the way that MDF carves too. That's nice. But each each different wood and each each material is you know good for some things and not other things. So you do, you, I choose my my substrate based on the project that I'm working on. Am I doing this for a living? Yeah, I'm a full-time artist. I am a full-time artist. I do a lot of different things, and I keep busy, and I work a lot. But yes, I'm a full-time artist. So the koala is fully carved. Look at that back little leg, furry little leg. That's what we got going so far. <clears throat> Rocket time. Okay. Rocket, rocket, rocket. Is this an order for a customer? No, this is this is just a for fun piece, and it'll probably eventually make it up on my website. I got I just finished um, designing what fourteen new carved pieces, five of them. And I'm not sure which five yet. I'm going to put into a gallery, um, but five of the fourteen will go to the gallery, and the rest of them are for me and for my website and for showing at festivals so I decided it was time to do a little work for me since I've been, been doing a lot of work for other galleries out
and then I can double back. Cut off the side of the R. And then I go like this, and then the foot. Maintain a line. Thank you. I, I liked how that piece came out. Are you in, are you in Atlanta? Are you um, going to be able to make it out to the, the Squishy Puss um, birthday party thing? Nice. Um, I'm up in the suburbs too, actually. Um, but same night, I have a show at Kibbe Gallery, um, which is not too far from where the, the Telephone Factory lost on Ralph McGill. Um, but you should come out to that too, where I've got a bunch of, let's, wait, let's see, like 10, 10 new pieces, some you haven't seen on here. Um, just stop on by. It's a fun, fun little gallery. A nice little show. It's got a lot of other nice little artists in it too. So you know, I think you'll enjoy it. If you come on out if you're looking for something to do on Saturday night. I've I've got the links um, with all, all the information in my website, so you can check it out there. Also, be giving out. There's a a bird and a mouse little little prints that I'm giving out for free only at the um, the Kibby show. So if you come out, you can get a little bird, a little mouse, little bird or a little mouse print. So.
a room in the end of the room. Before anyone says that this is a carved and painted piece, I know the letters are going to be backwards if I wanted to print them, but I'm not going to be printing these, so. These I don't print. Almost done with the tedious with letters. Letters are tedious. They're not the specific shapes. I like leaving little artifacts though, but not that many. Just a little one there. Probably get rid of some of these in here. That's probably enough. That's good there. All right. All right. Let me um. So, I'm going to get rid of these. This line pretty good. Need to find big long strokes. Clear. 
clear out all the area I want to clear out. And then I'll go through and make those hatch marks. I'm going to do one little, one more. Make this wider. All right. Even that out. Bring a little more curve to that little area there. Okay. And now, hatch marks. Crooked. I'm gonna try to straighten it out. That's better. Okay. Now we're independent lines. This leading edge of this rocket fan. side. After this carving, I'm gonna have to sharpen my tools. They're a little, little, little in need of a little sharpening. Okay. Seems I'm tired. Not quite. It's got a little quiet. Got almost finished up here, so. Just working through.
If I wasn't filming, it's possible I'd get up and take a break or something at the moment, but... One of the reasons I film is to keep myself accountable too, to keep working. Do you ever start with outlining the project, the printing areas? Wait, outlining to project the printed areas. I always need hours just for the first run to protect the details. Is that something? Wait, I'm, I'm confused. Do you ever start with the outlining to protect the printing areas? Oh, just go through and outline the whole piece. Um, no, I, I work from area to area. You know, but... You saw that I just outlined the, the wing of this piece. But I wouldn't I wouldn't sit here and go and do the whole thing because I make decisions as I'm working through it too that I wouldn't necessarily have made if I, you know, start the whole thing. I compare, you know, the values of the piece and I was like that needs to be darker, so I'll make that that decision. And if I went through and I kinda got the whole piece ready to carve, I wouldn't be able to do that. Going through and adding a second layer of uh, lines is nice to do on these. Like phantom lines, they're fun. It gives it a nice look too. Like a shiny metallic look. I hope I understood your question about the outlining. I'm not quite sure that I did, but if I didn't, let me know. Same thing on this other side. So I'm gonna take a little bit of out of here, out of here, out of here, out of here. Okay, and now the cloud. So here we go, so far, almost done, almost there. That's what I got so far. Looks good. Um, I meant that I cut around most of the details before taking away the big areas, but like you said, yeah, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, I make decisions as I go. So I don't um I don't necessarily, you know, go and follow every line that I've made because you know, I would I wouldn't know there's some some things that I want to keep, some things that I want to take away. Um and I'm not I'm probably like 80% sure of how this piece is going to turn out when I start. Um, but there's that 20% that I, that I, um, 
you know, I let I let the wood dictate how it wants to look and how the carving dictate how it wants to look. Um, and it would be difficult to do that and go and take out, you know, outline the whole piece and not knowing what that 20% is going to look like. So, like this area, I had no idea that I was going to carve this area like that. But once I started carving, it made sense to do it that way. I probably, I was, when I first started, I probably thought I was going to carve it all like this and going to go this way. But this area made more sense to go that way instead of this way. So. For how long have I been doing this? Uh, th this piece specifically, I've been working on it for about, you know, probably about an hour and a half. Um, lifetime, I've been doing it probably about eight to 10 years, somewhere in that range. I started when I was in school um, and I've been, I graduated about seven years ago. constantly. I could do courses. I've been, you know, thinking about doing some things and I've, ta I've taught courses before. Um, we'll see. Um, have I ever cut myself? Yeah, I've, I've cut myself once really bad um, when, I, when I first started. But then you learn how not to do that again. And then I haven't really cut myself since. I've, I've nicked to myself here and there, but generally it's it's when I'm picking up tools and stuff. Um, but not, not cut myself ever since then.
Getting close, getting close. Getting close. Alright. Dump. And I'm gonna zigzag this line. So going to, I'm just gonna straight this one, make that one up like that. And then I'm gonna clear.
um, the, the material that's underneath the block is just, um, um, it's, it's count, it's a uh, shelf liner. And it's there because I'm working on that. What you're at, the table that you see is actually like on a, uh, you know, 30% incline. So I don't hurt my back as I carve. It's just a standard, like, uh, drafting table. So that it's, it's there so it doesn't slip off the table as I'm working. If I didn't have it there, it would constantly fall. Clean up some of these extra marks that may catch ink. But other than that, this thing is done. Done, done, done. Well, I I'm gonna do one more thing. One more thing. Um, so I do draw the lines. The the black lines. I'll, I'll bring it close in a second. I want to round these off because I'm not thrilled with how these look. Round this off a little bit. Uh, so you're gonna see two different kinds of black as I bring it closer. Hopefully you can see that there's like drawn lines in there, but there's also spray paint. So I do draw the lines, but then I spray paint the whole block so that when I carve it away, I know what's been cut already. And I know what's gonna, it's gonna look like when it prints. So it is done. There we go. The little koala room all carved out and finished. So there we go. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching and hanging out with me as I carve this guy. Um, I'll have him finished up soon. Thank you guys for watching. See you later. Ending the video now. Alright guys, I am carving 
this little koala bear riding a rocket ship. Um, this one is going to be one of my carved and painted pieces. Um, not for not for t-shirts or not anything. Um, and this one, before anyone asks, is is MDF. After doing a few freelance projects, I finally have a little bit of time to work on my own stuff, which is nice. The freelance projects are nice too, but it's nice to, to not have to do those and work on my own things. When I'm doing my carvings, the the faces I like to keep pretty accurate to how I've drawn them. There's certain there's certain areas that I I allow for um, you know adding texture and stuff, but if I do too much texture in the face, it distracts from the face. Um, and you can't really see what's going on, so I like to. Carve out away most of the face and keep that mostly uh, clear. But then when I go and do the rest of the body, I'm going to start, you know, focusing on textures and the direction of the skin and, uh, in this case, the fur. Let's see. Little fur overlapping the, the nose here, coming from this angle to be able to get to get it. Not quite sure I'm gonna do the nose yet. I'm probably gonna end up carving most of it away. But I'll toy with the idea of something else before I go and do that.
to thin it out. How long does this process take? Um, well, there's, there's many steps in the process. Um, I, I think that this carving, the, just the carving itself, nothing else, I'm not the drawing or uh, painting it later, um, but just there's the carving itself. It's probably gonna take me around two hours, I would say, for this little guy. This one's not that big. I'd say about two hours for this this carving. We'll see though. Maybe maybe quicker, maybe longer. It's always hard to say. like the edges of the face here and I'm gonna leave a little bit more in this area because we're getting to towards the edge of the face give the uh, illusion of like a gradient wrapping around so I'm just gonna take my tool and take little nicks out of it until I'm happy with it What am I carving on? This I'm currently carving on MDF medium density fiberboard. I like adding the texture. I like taking little 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 mix out. I like how it looks. That somebody wants to describe uh, my work 
as as uh, as like the ocean, like a like a just a vast field of repeating marks, and I kind of like that that description. That create that work together to create something. Uh, so three questions. Um, do you, do I make custom designs? Yes, I do. I do uh, uh, commission work. I've got a lot of information on that on my website www.newstudios.com. Um, I also have a link in my profile to my store where you can order them. Second question is, usually takes an hour. Um, this one probably take me about two hours, probably. Um, and that's just the carving. That's nothing else. That's not the the painting or the you know design or the drawing or the getting the board ready. Um, there's a lot of steps in the process. Painting the edges. Just the carving's probably gonna take me about two hours on this guy. And do I have a YouTube channel? Um, the answer is I have, yes I have, I've had one for a while, but I haven't really uploaded stuff onto it. But I've started putting things onto it as, um, um, like the, these, this video will eventually get uploaded onto it. And I have some inking videos on there. And I'm gonna try to work on doing, um, you know, YouTube specific content very soon. If you guys have any recommendations of something that you'd like to see, you know, you can leave it in a comment on my YouTube channel somewhere. And I will, I will try to accommodate if I can. And I'm trying to keep up with the the comments, but sometimes they come in quickly. Um, and if so, if I'm sorry if I you know miss miss something that somebody asked or said. How can you get a hold of me? The best way to get a hold of me is to send me an email. Um, and the, I, have a, I have a link in my profile. Um, that, you, that links to my email address. So just click send email or send message. Um, that's the best way to get a hold of me. I carve MDF, medium density fiber board.
Nothing up. That's, so that's a popular question today. So I've, I've answered it a couple times already. Um, but how long does it take me to create these? This it's it's hard to say. Um, but this one's gonna take me about two hours to carve out, uh, and that's just the carving. That's not you know the design of it or anything else. Painting or whatever. And this one's gonna be a carved and painted piece. This isn't going to be a t-shirt design. Maybe eventually, but this block is for, for a carving. I have a number of these. Uh, I just got, I think, 14 designs ready to carve out. So I have a, a pile of work to run through here in the next couple days. I got... Um, I'm carving some for myself, just for fun, and then I have a number that I, um, about, about five of them are going to be going to a gallery here in Atlanta. I've I've done people before. Um, I've cur I've heard people a lot. Is there a difference between a block for printing and a block you paint on? Uh, yeah, there is. Um, the blocks that the blocks that I typically carve for printing um, will have a a border that I leave around it so I can control the edges a little bit more. Um, they're also only a quarter inch. MDF, um, while these ones are a half inch MDF. And I just, I just make them differently. These ones are never printed. My, my uh, carpet painted pieces are never printed. They're, they exist only as a carbon painted one one off original piece that's to keep them nice and clean how do I paint them just like you paint anything else um, with a paintbrush and acrylic paint All right, one more year to go. One more year to go. So I'll, guess I'll, I'll walk through my thought process as I'm doing these. So I want them to look furry, so I'm just taking out little pieces and I, and I kind of keep my marks systematic and curling around the edges and going all in the same direction, but working with the form too. And I like to carve out the edge of a piece like an outline. But to keep it furry, I don't want to carve out just like a solid straight line. I want to keep it textured feeling. So 
I do it like this. And as I get closer in, I take out less and less. So it gives the appearance of being darker. Um, and then I'm going to kind of do the same thing on the inside edge. Just kind of follow it around, taking little nicks out. Um, so. Somebody asked, um, how do I come up with the different animals to carve? Uh, I just kind of, I don't know, I just, I just kind of start drawing and I, I, I pull up pictures of animals and I, and I, and I draw them. And if I like how it turns out, I, I keep, I keep drawing them and I do something fun with them or generally I like to have, you know, a couple different elements to each carving. Otherwise, um, generally not always, but like either the animal doing something, wearing something, eating something, fighting something, dressed up as something, scared of something, facial expression. So I try to add um, just a, a different element to each carving just to make it fun. I feel like it tells like a little bit of a, has a little bit of a narrative behind it when I do that too. Does this have a board name? I don't understand. Um, the board is called MDF, medium density fiber board. Other than that, I don't understand the question. All right, so that when I get it closer into here, it's gonna be darker, so I take out less. But I try to, I kind of try to match it. I wanna leave more of the black. So just take out a little bit, little nicks until I like it. Keeping with the direction, always carving in the same direction. Can you write the name of the board, please? Uh, I don't have anything to write on, but it's MDF, medium density fiber board. It's in my it's in my bio. You can read it there. It says MDF engineer. I also have a fax page on my website, newstudios.com, that has a lot of questions answered.
All right. Now to go to the white. Most of this is going to be end up being gray when I do the final painting. Gray to gray to purple because I like doing things in purple. Um, and then most of this stuff in here is going to be white. So I am. I'm going to clear cut all of this area now. It's just about being, about controlling the edges of my tool and following my lines that I've drawn. But I'm not trying to attain any effect other than just clear it out. How, how do I do this figure on the board? I mean, you're watching me do it. I, um, you know, I'm using, I'm using uh, sharp tools to carve away everything that I don't want the ink to touch when I ink the, when I ink the final block up. And then I paint down into the recessed areas, the areas that I've carved away. And then when I ink up the final block, the ink will only stick to the raised areas of the block. I'm getting a different shape tool to clear a little bit better. Uh, how do I transfer the drawing onto the MDF? Um, I I use a um, I just I just draw it on, but I use a projector to get my sketch onto the board. I set the board upright. I use a projector to project my sketch onto the board, and then I draw it out with a sharpie. You could also use transfer paper to do the same thing, but I'm working quite large sometimes, so a, a projector lets me get, you know, the exact size without having to print out the exact size. I can measure a projector on the board and put a ruler up to it and measure how big it's going to be and then draw it out.
how long have I been doing this? Um, I've been carving, let's see, I'm gonna carve the whole nose out and I'll paint it purple. If I was doing this for a print, I'd do it differently probably. But for a painting, I went like this. Um, how long have I been doing this? I have been carving, uh, let's see, probably like eight to 10 years, somewhere in that range. It's hard to say like when I first, you know, did my first carving, but I, I, I did it in college. And I've been graduated for about seven years from college. And I was doing relief for about the last two or three years once I was in school. So, two to three years is a good estimate. Or not two to three years. <laughs> uh, seven to ten years is a good estimate of how long I've been working on this. Like I said, if I was doing this for a print, I probably would have carved the nose out differently. Um, but since it's going to be a carved and painted piece, I carved out like a line drawing. This is one of the things I would have done differently in like a t-shirt print. I probably would have, just, I would have left it mostly black, but then kind of hinted at some of the objects in it give it shade and depth. All right. Um, what kind of glove am I using? It's, it's a mechanics glove. I just got it at Home Depot. It has, it has leather and stuff on it. To you know, take the pressure off my hands as I carve. I'm also wearing a wrist brace underneath that. What's up, Sam? What's the name of this process? Um, relief, relief carving 
leaf printing, woodcut. Thanks, Mark. I'm actually really excited about the pet show. I've, I've got, you know, 10 pieces in that show at QB. And, you know, I've shown, I've shown there a lot. But it's always fun to show new, new work. Um, and a little, little nerve-wracking, too, to see how people react to it. Um, and I'm excited to share the... You know the the rest of the new pieces they on here to you guys after the show. I think I've shared three of the new pieces, three of the ten new pieces on here, and I've shown I've shown them probably all of them minus one or two in bits and pieces on here, um, but just not as the finished final piece. But thank you. I'm excited. It's always fun to go out and show show your work. Where do I put my phone that I have a good view of what's going on? Um, it's mounted above um, my carving table. Um, I do have to um, kind of look up every now and then to see it, but it's not a, it's not a major extent. I just kind of you know lean up and look over it. It's kind of it's slightly you know if I if I'm looking forward, it's right on my eye level, and I just have to look a little bit above to see what you guys are writing. So that's why sometimes I'll miss like one or two things that you guys say, but generally I see everything. Generally, but I might miss something here and there. It's just on a, um, like a microphone stand that's connected to the wall so it doesn't shake when I shake the table. Transfer. You may have answered this question already, but when you transfer your image, it appears you have a gray in the background, darker lines to define. How do you get the two-toned? Um, I just draw it with a Sharpie and then I spray paint it. I just use the cheapest black spray paint that you can find. 
but that's that's what you see and that's what the black is and then the line the the line work is the is sharpie drawing it's not complicated it just makes it easier for me to see the uh, marks that I'm making I'll clean that up a little bit All right. What? How long does this normally take you? Um, this this will take me probably about two hours to carve. This guy. And no problem. I uh, thank you guys for watching and you know wanting and being interested in my work and my process. Um, Nothing that I'm doing is just like a secret. Um, I mean, I don't. I don't think that anything that I'm doing is um, process-wise is something that hasn't been done before, over and over and over again. Relief printing is hundreds of years old, and I'm sure there are people that have, you know, stained their blocks black before. Um, there are people that have painted the blocks before it's it's all it's content and subject matter that makes things unique and I'm I'm uh, yeah and how you present it so thank you guys person I learned from this technique he just laid um, he just laid paper on the wood surface with a puzzle glue and carved away the paper oh, that seems weird um, do I sell what I do? yes um, there's a link in my profile to my online store that has all of my available works on it um and you can you can buy you know I've got like stickers and t-shirts and and uh, a handful of carvings not many because um, they they sell quick and they're they're one one of a kind originals so once they sell they're gone um, but I do I do have things on my website and I would appreciate it if you took it out checked it out so. Yeah, the puzzle glue thing, I'm sure, I'm sure, uh, you know, it was just a, a watered down version of relief printing. He's just maybe working with what he had or what he knew. I'm sure it worked to a certain extent, maybe not uh, to great effects. 
but I mean, relief printing is all, all it is, is manipulating the surface of, of something and then being able to, to print off of it. Do I, sell, do I have sales of turkey? Yes. Um, everything if, should be set up for online um, for international orders. There is additional shipping charges. Um, but I do, I have, I'm pretty sure I've shipped the turkey before. I can't be certain, but I'm pretty sure I have. I, sh I ship internationally all the time. Is it incredibly expensive to commission a piece? Now, my commission started like 150 bucks. Um, I try to be, you know, affordable and attainable to most people. Uh, but my commission started at $150. And they go up from there. And they're based on size. Yeah, I put a lot of time and effort into them for you guys. I also do them in my leisure time, so um, you know, give me give me a a good month or two to get to work on them for you. There are other things that will take priority over a commission, like I do I do freelance work, and that generally has a a stricter deadline. So, but I, I try to be affordable and attainable. What else do you do, the freelance and the such? What else do you do? Um, I do, I, I mean, I'm a full-time artist. And I do a lot of different things. Um, the freelance works that I recently, um, I can't I can't talk about one of them. Um, because I have to wait. I'll, I'll share it on here when I can. But I, I can't talk about it until the product is released. Um, and I think it's April 18th is when the product gets released. So I'll, I'll be posting it after then. Um, but I do like uh, like t-shirt designs for for companies and and uh, logo designs. I, I did a I designed medals for a trail race company in California. Um, Stuff like that. Just design work for people who like how my work turns out. I just finished up the t-shirt design for a, a local bar here in Atlanta. That's what I was working on this morning slash last night. 
Maybe doing anything new. No, thank you. I tried to read most of that message, but I was scrolling away as I was reading it, and I didn't want to spend too much time not carving, but I think I got the gist of what you were saying. Getting into the less organic parts of this uh, this piece, so it's going to be a lot more straight line carving and a lot more clearing out. A lot less nicking it away, and a lot more just you know just big bold movements. So I've got these sharpie lines drawn into here, but I never draw the lines. The lines are like notes to myself. I never. Um, expect to copy them a hundred percent and I'm actually changing these ones quite a bit because I didn't like how they did I just kind of scribble it whatever's comfortable with my hand at the time but now that it's not you know fixed on a board and I can rotate it however I want to get a better mark I've seen you do full uh, full carvings on here. Just can't stop watching love. Definitely cool. Yeah, please do. Please, uh, you know, order order a couple t-shirts. I love printing them for you guys, and it uh, helps support me and what I do here. So if you like it, please do. Definitely. So you can see that here. I guess I'll give you a little close up of what's going on here now. So we got this little guy, which I'm pretty happy with so far. The little marks in there. You see how like the little marks come together to make to create the value. I take up most of the marks in this in this area right here, and then it gets darker there. Um, so do I use, I use this V gouge for 90% of everything I'm doing. Um, any, any mark that I don't want to be controlled, I'm using the V gouge. Um, and I do have different tools that I use for different purposes, um, or different, you know, if I want something a little bit more curved or if I'm clearing out a large area, I'll pull out a different tool and it's just each tool has a different shape to it. But I like the, the, the sharp shape of the V gouge. So I use that for most everything that I do. You know, the sharp linear shape. This is, can you see that? Like a V gouge, that's what I'm using for most of everything. So this has words in it. It says Vroom, because that's what all my rockets say on them. But there's a chance 
This, this one's mostly covered up the room on this one, so you, you can't see it as well. Let's see. Yeah, like the V's under here. This is the this is the top of the V. But if you're familiar with my work, you know that my rockets are room rockets. And I've got a couple different levels of room rockets. I've got the all of my small room rockets are you know just room, and then I've got larger room rockets that are room two thousands, and those are for my larger room uh, my larger rocket pieces. And then I did a you know a super large room in this next batch with the giraffe and he's a room 3000 so let me get this little leg out of the way so I know what I'm doing do you plan on attending art events in Dallas Texas soon um probably not to be honest with you I live in Atlanta um you know, if, if I, I do, I do, you know, want to travel more. So if there's like an event that you think would be good for me and like lucrative for me, you can shoot me an email and suggest it to me and I'll look it 